Hey everyone, Merrick's here, bringing you another video. This one is going to be on Roman Reigns Ghostbusters. Uh, so Roman is the one that looks potentially achievable uh, through shards through the event. We'll have to see by the time it's over. He is a Legend Era striker. He's a defensive striker. Um, I love that these guys are Legend Era and not Modern. We have a ton of Modern, so very excited they made these Legend. Roman's really interesting. I think he's quite good uh, in a different sort of way, and he's definitely what I would say is a defensive um, striker. Uh, strap we're going to have on, going to be here. I don't have a good black move damage medal, so worth noting I have a flat one on Fury. Um, then just regular double Fury. Black gem damage, 88%. Using my own strap on this one, so 20% gem damage. Did not unlock a skill plate. Don't think I really need one um, to show what he's capable of. Um, but certainly, there are some plates that would make him better. Um, as far as his trainer, coach ability, and stuff, links. He has the Ghostbusters link. Red move, start with 10 more move point. Legend era, 10% uh, more damage. He's a trainer, another one of these MP downs. This is the yellow 10 MP down at six star. Uh, they're gonna be have niche usefulness, potentially really good for certain people. Um, generally, I actually use them more on offense uh, on somebody that's like a turn two uh, character if they have an open trainer slot, um, targeting someone with yellow moves so they can't go off on me turn one. That's typically the use I have for them is offensively. Anyway. Uh, Roman defensive um, poster, really fun, really cool. We're going to start off with this moveset that I think will be um, especially good at 6-star. We'll cover that after this. Total Protonic Reversal, 4 MP yellow, deal 112k damage, kick out a pin and make 10 random gems into black gems. Playing Possum. Uh, this is a really cool idea. It's a take on a kick out in a different way. This move can only be used while pinned. Deal 105k damage and make 20 random gems into power gems of strength 41,000. That's 800k in power gem strength right there. Then we're going to use the finisher, how we do things downtown. Um, 10 MP black finisher, deal 154k damage, choose 8 gems to destroy and pin the opponent. Entourage, we're going to run with Kofi. Uh, just so in feud to make sure the kickouts, I'm going to call them both kickouts, even though they're not, technically this isn't, are loaded turn one. We are going to use uh, Taker for 53% bigger uh, power gems and one extra. We're going to use uh, Bliss for 25% extra. If you don't have Bliss, use Hall of Fame um, Brie, as she is 10% and adds one. And we're going to use Riddle for 13,000 more. So our power gems are going to get all the way to 86k and 21 of them. That's 1.6 million in power gem damage. You do have to get pinned. Uh, fortunately, in Feud, that's not hard uh, to get pinned. So uh, we're going to go against Ivar. I am going to uh, wait for him to pin me, and then we'll go from there and see what this looks like. Uh, really, this moveset, I don't think particularly needs a plate um you do want to get pinned cheap shot would be fine bad attitude for this particular move set to get more um, black mp any of the skill plates that on a match give you yellow uh, would be good in case for some reason your yellow isn't charged in a pin you could charge it um so like the purple and stuff uh, i do see the five match i don't want it i want to let ivar pin me so i'm just going to take the yellow hope he takes the five match Perfect. All going according to plan. Excellent. And um, you can see here, uh, if I didn't have the black match with this moveset, I probably would use the kick out to get black gems on the board. Uh, however, um, what I want to do is for sure hit this. Let me go to uh, 1.25 speed too. And then um, to kick out, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I want to leave the black three match uh, if possible and try not to take out too many power gems, which looks like I'm taking out a decent amount no matter how I look at it, or two. So we're going to do that. Now I need to fill the finisher. Um, so, like I said, if I wouldn't have had a black match, I would have used the kick out. 
And it looks like he's probably going to wipe out a bunch of our power gems. You can see how hard we hit on that swipe, though. We took him way down. We're going to lose a few power gems here. Not the end of the world. Again, I could use the kick out. But I want to keep my power gems on the board. So let's just take a swipe and let the power gems kick us out. And then uh, let's hit the finisher. Careful to not annihilate any power gems. Uh, easily fill our yellow. We're going to leave the... Actually, we could just destroy those and then take the black. One point three million pin, uh, and that was losing a lot of power gems. So, pretty cool. Um, that power gem move at six star, the base goes from forty one k to sixty three k. So your power gems are going to be well over two million damage a tick. And why I'm making a point of that is because his six star move is a yellow move. That's only 3 MP. That swaps a random 3x1 area into yellow gems. So I would absolutely at 6 star run him triple yellow with this move. Uh, the same setup. Um, and then after you get pinned, uh, you just hit this and tick for 2 million damage every time. So you're just going to tick him right on down. Uh, pretty cool. Definitely a defensive style character, so I like it. Your kickouts would always be charged with this move. Um, you just hold it till after you're pinned and get your power gems on the board. The other kickout wouldn't even necessarily need to be there. You could also alternate uh, the the red move that uh, um, chooses a black area. And that would tick gems as well, but honestly, I wouldn't do that as this is only going to move at three unless it gets in a bad spot. So just hit that and then tick your gems away um, at six star with a big health pool. In fact, this is a, a striker that I would actually consider running full vitality uh, with that kind of build. Um, and then putting escape artist plate on him because he doesn't really need a plate at all. And uh, he would be awesome defensively that way. So really like that build set. Uh, moving on, that would be available at 6-star. We're going to go to triple black. Uh, obviously, it's triple black, so you could run um, a drip plate on there, Dominator drip plate, incredibly rare. Not even going to list it as an option, um, but you certainly could. Oops, what am I doing? Not organizing this the way I want to. That's what I'm doing. We'll get there eventually. So, uh, triple black, uh, pretty solid. You've seen the finisher. We'll go over the other two. We got the guillotine, 7 MP black submission. This is a pretty beefy submission. Four turns at 134k, uh, 24 random gems, leaves um, immobiles behind. Um, at six star, that sub goes all the way up to 210k base for four turns. So it's a pretty big boy, um, submission, even without, um, sub perks. That was, that definitely got my attention. And then the 8MP Paranormal Punch. Deal 93k damage and make nine random immobile gems into multiplies of strength seven. I'm sure you see the idea. Hit the sub, leave the immobiles, hit this, turn and multiply, and then choose the multiplies to destroy on the finisher. Uh, Entourage, we're going to run with double black MP. Uh, so the sub is ready, turn one. That would be 8 MP. Santa Hogan would be 9 MP with defensive perks maxed which why that would matter is the turn after the sub the finisher would be loaded if you don't have santa hogan or you don't have um mp maxed uh or your opponent doesn't have um mp max then uh it would still be loaded if they don't 
Uh, also, you're going to notice Big Show on there uh, for Black Gems starting. That's assuming you don't have a 17k Santa. Uh, just to have more chance at black gems on the board. Also, um, potentially, since black gem is your highest damage, you can um, hit them with the finisher. So do keep in mind, no 17k Santa and max perks. You're going to have to take in a swipe in between the sub and the finisher. Uh, but if they don't have max defensive perks, you still can go right to the finisher even without 17k Santa. I hope that made sense. It's getting late. It's past midnight. I'm a little bit tired. So I'm likely to say stuff a little bit backwards. Uh, but hopefully it makes sense. And then we're going to put show on for that 20% more chance of black gems on the starting board. Um, bad attitude, simply uh, in case uh, you need to recycle and a multiply doesn't land on a black gem. That would certainly help um, recycle. So that would be a decent free option. And then the Rhonda's Jacket adds 100% gem damage to black and yellow gems after a sub. So show should be 6k. You're way down here. Most of my trainers are leveled up a lot farther. There you are. 8k. Okay. This one's not bad either. Uh, it's pretty good control. Uh, reminds me a lot of um, Mutant Foley, actually, uh, but more less po no power gems and then bigger multiplies. Uh, it does remind me a lot of Mutant Foley, though. Some black gems on the board. Hopefully, we keep some and get some immobiles on them. We'll see how that goes down. So potentially we could get three multiplies on black gems, which would be great. We got one. However, the nice thing is this is a choose to destroy. It's not necessarily multiply. Uh, we can pick up these two and get the three match there. Easily refill our black gems and then we can just pick up the rest of the uh, multiply gems um, like so. That reloads us. We hit for about a million damage after the sub uh, hitting a nice little drain. So not too shabby. And uh, we're ready to recycle. I do rather like this moveset as well. Missed the black gems totally. Unfortunate. Um, so this is like a situation where it would actually be nice. Oh, wow, we can get all kinds of chaos with that. It would be nice to have... Um, the bad attitude plate. Uh, because we would get uh, three there and then three there, six. So hopefully we keep them down. Because this is a case of not recycling. Very nice pin. Hit for over a million. I think we're going to keep him down. Okay. So not bad. I do like that moveset. You did see the one of the issues you can run into. And that got me thinking about uh, Super Sub. Um, and what that might look like. So let's see the two moves we haven't seen. This is a recycling sub, um, and gonna actually set him up super sub style. Um, the Sumerian drop, 6 MP red, deal 72k damage, and choose a 3x2 area to swap into black gems. And then the checkmate skeptic, 7 MP red, 83k damage, make 18 immobile gems into red gems. The idea is to cycle your moves. Uh, because it's lower MP and we can get away with one MP trainer, we're going to go with red to start. So we're going to go butch. And then we're going to use all the sub trainers. 
And then there is still some sub perks in Feud. I want to say it's 50%, might be 100%. That's on the base. So his base is 134k. If it's 50%, it's going to add about 75k. Um, if it's 100%, it's going to add 134k for each turn. Uh, so definitely I uh, would beef them up because even without any um, sub perk, you can see he's going to end up hitting really hard with all sub trainers. And this one, I really like the Foley's Plate um, because you're going to do this 3x2 choose area um, and it's going to put power gems on the board. So once you hit the, the checkmate skeptics, uh, it should tick after the sub. Uh, so I kind of like that option. Also, um, that's the wrong plate. You would want something that makes red. I grabbed the wrong icon. Um, any of the plates that make red... Uh, would be what you want in case the immobile gems don't line up for a red match. So like the Christmas tree one, green to red, um, aftershock. Apologies. Shelton and then RJ for the super sub. If you don't have RJ, I wouldn't run this moveset. I would run one of the other ones. Uh, this does get the sub up to well over 1.6 million, even without feud perks. So a couple cycles should do it. Um, really solid. So this is the move that would set off the Foley plate. You could also put Taker plate on there too. Um, so that would be an option. That would set the Foley plate off. The sub, um, because it generates 24, wouldn't overwrite them. However, obviously Ivar could. Um, and then when we hit the next move, those power gems would tick. So the decent option. You can see pretty beefy sub. You run the risk of um, having running out of some immobiles, having them not line up. Here you can see we're fine, uh, and then some. So we're gonna get a nice amount of reds there. Would still run a double fury uh, off of the reds if they ever, you know, have a sub plate that makes uh, red gem damage. That would certainly be uh, something I would consider. You know, like Ronda's jacket, but red gems. I, I would imagine eventually we'll see that. I should bring him down to like 500-ish K or so. I'm just going to take this off because this was the wrong skill plate. Yes. Again, pretty nice spread on our reds. This will likely finish it. On our immobiles, I mean. Oh, I mean, well, that works too. This will definitely finish it. So yeah, another really strong build for him. Um, I think he's pretty good. Striker's an interesting class because you have Rocker Sean, and this is what kind of what we'll talk about here. You have Rocker Sean who's like head and shoulders like really, really good. Then you have Cody who to me is like better than everyone except Sean. Um, and then after that, it's really kind of open for debate between some guys. I happen to think Striker Lashley is very good and probably would be my third after that uh, previously um, before seeing Roman. Um, so let's kind of take a look and see where I think he's going to fit in um, and fit in on my roster. Um, I have to say the six star triple yellow is what really interests me. I would run him double vite, run him that way, uh, double vitality, uh, really stack the hit points, um, get away with a two MP trainer, no problem. Um, and that's what I really like about him. I also like the fact that he's a defensive, offensive-minded guy. Um, for, like, boss battle, he could heal. 
uh, kind of thing and still output some damage. We've obviously seen some really good buffs to multiply gems and he can kind of go back and forth between them quite well. Um, so I could see him being solid for boss battle. But let's kind of compare them to strikers. Like I said, you got Rocker Sean and you got Cody. I don't have Cody, and those are like my one two. After that, I would have put like Lashley three, and then probably like Foley, um, or possibly RVD. Foley RVD in that range. And I think Roman kind of fits. I th I think I like Lashley more. However, I do think Roman's power gems on the kickout are really unique. And it would be hard for me to get away from wanting to take that up um, and then just be able to get pinned on turn one, which most people are going to do to you in feud, and then just hit the power gems and then, you know, spam that one MP, that three MP move that recycles itself over and over. And he does have some other fun stuff to play with. So I think he kind of fits right in there with like Foley, RVD in that in that mode. Also 3 MP yellow certainly could use that in Showdown quite effectively um, on his own with a MP plate that makes yellow uh, to charge it super easily. So I think Roman is like a really, really good striker. Defensive striker, the other one would be Braun. So you'd be comparing him to Braun. Braun has multiply gems too. Um, so that's kind of where you'd think about it. Um, as far as the boss battle perspective, but yeah, I think he fits right in that range after uh, I still think I would put Lashley three and then like very similar to like Foley, um, RVD potentially almost in that group too. Um, that's kind of where, where I feel like he fits in. Let's see who else am I missing besides Cody. So I'm not forgetting someone cause I have a bad habit. If I don't have them, they don't exist. Right. I think we all do that a little bit. Uh, hot minute to hear the bottom. Do, 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 do. Uh, Macho King? Interesting. Um, I don't know. I feel like Roman I would like more, but I don't know for sure that that's the case. I think I maybe I'm just biased because I don't know Macho King. Definitely like Roman more than Hall of Fame Hogan um, or this Andre for sure. Um, yeah, I think that's about where I put him in that three to six range of, of strikers. You kind of take your pick uh, where you want to put them, um, in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, and share as that really helps me out. And be looking for my other Ghostbusters previews. Uh, so thanks for watching, guys, and good luck out there.